Now we'll move on to discuss the accessory glandular organs of the digestive system, the liver, the gallbladder, and the pancreas. Let's begin this section with the physiology of the liver. As you can see in the diagram, the liver itself is divided into a right lobe and left lobe. It's connected to the gallbladder and pancreas through a duct. And both of these empty their contents into the duodenum or first portion of the small intestine. The liver is the largest visceral organ in the body. It has many functions. The functions of the liver include number one, metabolic regulation, as well as number two, hematological regulation. Within metabolic regulation, all the absorbed nutrients coming into the body pass through the hepatic portal circulation and enter the liver. Hepatocytes within the liver monitor and regulate blood levels of amino acids, lipids, and carbohydrates. Its hematological regulation includes the fact that the liver receives approximately one quarter of all the blood pumped from the heart. It functions to remove old or damaged red blood cells. And it produces key transport proteins used in the blood to move nutrients. The third major function of the liver is the synthesis of bile. The bile produced by the liver is stored in the gallbladder. Bile is made up of water, ions, bilirubin, and bile salts. And it plays a key role in the duodenum where it's secreted to assist in the absorption of fatty acids. Now let's discuss the anatomy of the liver. Its anatomical location within the body is just below the diaphragm with the majority of the liver on the right side of the upper abdomen. The anatomy of the liver includes the right lobe, the gallbladder where the bile is stored, the common bile duct, the portal vein, the hepatic artery, the left lobe of the liver, and the hepatic vein. The liver is supplied by two main blood vessels into its right lobe, the hepatic artery and the portal vein. The hepatic artery distributes blood to the liver, gallbladder, and the associated pancreas. The portal vein brings venous blood from the spleen, pancreas, and small intestine for processing after digestion and absorption. The liver filters all blood coming through the portal vein carrying the products of digestion and absorption. The histology of the liver. The basic unit of the liver are lobules, and the liver contains hundreds of thousands of them. Shown in the diagram is the arrangement of a lobule, with the bile duct, hepatic artery, and the hepatic vein. The hepatocytes lie along the sinusoids, which empty into the central vein. Along the sinusoids are Kupfer cells, and these cells specialize in phagocytosing damaged red blood cells and pathogens that have filtered through the liver. The path of blood flow in the liver is as follows. Blood enters the sinusoids from the portal vein and hepatic artery. Blood flows past the surface of the hepatocytes for exchange to take place. Next. The blood leaves the sinusoids and drains into the central vein, which merges with the hepatic vein. Now let's discuss the disease hepatitis. Hepatitis is inflammation of the liver, and it can be caused by a variety of things, viral infection, drugs, chemicals, and alcohol. Shown in the diagram on the surface of the liver are hepatic lesions, and at the cellular level, Hepatitis leads to fatty changes, cell necrosis, and cup for cell proliferation. Often, individuals with chronic hepatitis are unaware until the subclinical disease progresses and symptoms appear. The symptoms of clinical hepatitis include joint pain, nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, jaundice, 
and fluid retention in the region of the liver. The major viruses that cause hepatitis are called hepatitis A, B, and C. Also, alcohol is a major factor in hepatitis, and liver cirrhosis occurs more frequently in individuals with ongoing alcoholic hepatitis. If hepatitis is caused by drugs, chemicals, or alcohol, reducing the exposure is part of the treatment for those individuals. For individuals with viral hepatitis, diet changes to protect the liver and corticosteroids can be used along with cytokines, such as interferon. The gallbladder is a storage site for bile produced by the liver. Bile is an alkaline fluid produced by hepatocytes in the liver, and bile helps emulsify fats during digestion and absorption. Bile contains toracolic and deoxycholic salts, and in the intestine these salts combine with fat globules and break them down into small droplets for absorption. Bile also serves to excrete bilirubin, which is a product of processing old or damaged red blood cells in the liver. The gallbladder is made up of a fundus, a body, and a neck. It's a pear-sharp organ underneath the liver. Bile is ejected from the gallbladder in response to the hormone CCK or cholecystokinin. When chyme, which contains high concentrations of fat, enters the small intestine, it stimulates the intestinal mucosa to secrete CCK. CCK then causes the gallbladder to contract and eject its bile through the duct into the small intestine. The name of the duct is the common bile duct. The third accessory organ of the digestive system we'll discuss is the pancreas. Anatomically, the pancreas is made up of a head and a tail. It's connected to the duodenum through the common bile duct from the gallbladder. The pancreas itself has its own pancreatic duct. This is an elongated organ which is adjacent to the stomach. The pancreatic duct runs along the length of the pancreas and enters the first part of the small intestine, the duodenum. The common bile duct travels from the liver and enters the duodenum with the pancreatic duct, bringing bile from the gallbladder and liver. The pancreas has both an endocrine and exocrine function. Its endocrine function includes the formation and release of insulin and glucagon for the regulation of blood glucose levels. Its exocrine function, which is associated with the digestive system, is the production and release of enzymes for digestion. Now let's discuss the pancreatic enzymes which are vital to digestion and absorption. The pancreas produces the following enzymes trypsinogen and chymotrypsinogen for the digestion of protein into amino acids. Pancreatic lipase, which works with bile salts to break down fat globules for absorption and to target carbohydrates for absorption, amylase. In addition to these enzymes, the pancreas also produces bicarbonate ions, which neutralize the acid chyme as it enters the duodenum from the stomach. The enzymes produced by the pancreas are released in a precursor form. Once they're in the small intestine, they're converted into their active forms. The pancreatic enzymes are released from the pancreas in response to hormones such as gastrin, secretin, and CCK.